Just like most things in life, budgets aren't for everyone. For some people, it's actually best to not have a budget. Or at least that's what the author of the best-selling book, The Automatic Millionaire, David Bach, believes. Let's see if it's true. As you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be covering a very intriguing budget known as the Automatic Budget, or sometimes as the No Budget Budget. Hey everyone, Daniel here, and welcome to Next Level Life, the channel where you can learn all about investing, debt, retirement, and many other financial topics besides, because let's face it, the schools aren't going to teach it for us. So if any of those topics sound interesting to you, or if you want to learn how to better handle your money and have more financial freedom, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell next to my name to be notified every time I upload a new video. So when you think about being responsible with your money, a budget may very well be the first thing that comes to mind. And judging by how many budgeting videos I've already made on this channel, I would understand if you're just a little bit confused as to why I'm making a video that basically says, for some people, no budget is necessary. And the last thing I want to do is misguide you, so I want to get this out in the open first. The automatic budget is not for everybody. And if most of us are honest with ourselves, most of us do need some kind of budget. It may not be the zero-sum budget, not everybody needs to be that in-depth, but most of us do need some kind of budget. However, that doesn't mean that budgets are for everyone. Some people do have the necessary traits to live a financially successful life without doing a budget every month. So as you're watching this video, keep that in mind and be very honest with yourself, because as intriguing as this budget is, it isn't for everybody. And the last thing you want to do is get yourself tied to the idea of using this budget if it isn't for you, because then if you try to use it and it doesn't work, it's all the more discouraging when you realize you've got to go back to more traditional budgets. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the no budget budget. So what is the no budget budget and how does it work? Well, as the name implies, the automatic budget or the no budget budget aims to make as many of your financial decisions as possible automatically for you. This is done by setting up automatic payments for things like mortgage, rent, cell phone bills, savings, and retirement contributions, and anything else that you can think of a way to automate. And it's actually pretty surprising how many things you can do that with. After you've automated all the expenses and savings that you can, whatever's left over is yours to spend on whatever you want. The idea is that from here on in, you'll be able to just monitor your finances, as opposed to setting up a budget every single month. So who does this type of budget work best for? In my opinion, it works best for those who either already have more money coming in than they do going out, or, at the very least, have a pretty good idea of where they want their financial life to go. In other words, they have a very, very well-established goal. This is because for this budget to work long term, you need to be willing to pay yourself first like David Bach preaches, but you're also going to need to be willing to live on less. Why do I say that? Because just like with any budget, you do need to be able to invest enough now so that you can support yourself in retirement later. The difference with this budget is that since it's a lot more like a set it and forget it budget than most, because you decide right from the get-go how much you're going to allocate to what category and basically just have it done automatically from then on, your initial decisions are going to have a huge effect on your financial future. Say, for example, if you're in your early 20s right now and just starting your first job, and you decide to pay yourself first 10% of your wages, and you use the automatic budget throughout your entire 40-year working career. Just to make the numbers easier, let's assume that you make $50,000 a year. Meaning that if you're putting away 10%, you're saving $5,000 a year. At an 8% rate of return, which is roughly market average, you would wind up with $1,351,423.77 when you retire. However, there are a couple of things to consider here. First, $1.35 million is good, no doubt about it. But it's not going to be quite as good 40 years from now as it is today. If we assume that inflation is roughly 3% a year on average, that means that that $1.35 million would be worth roughly $430,000 today. Still not horrible, but not quite as good as the $1.35 million seemed. And if you were to get an 8% rate of return on that $430,000, you would realize that, in today's dollars anyway, your retirement income would be about $34,400 a year. Which again, if you have no debt and you have a paid for place to live, you could probably make it on that just fine. And if you're thinking that, I'd have to say, you have a point. It might not be a problem, and I'm not trying to use this example to denigrate the automatic budget. That's not my intent. 
But in this example, you were saving 10% of your money and making $50,000 a year, which means you were living off of $45,000 a year in today's dollars. So you would need to adjust your lifestyle a little bit once you reach retirement, which is probably not what we would want to do if we had the choice. But that's also the great thing about the automatic budget, is you do have the choice. And that's why I say your initial decisions are so important. Let's say that in the previous example, you decided to save 20% of your income instead of 10%, but you still made $50,000 a year. That means you would save about $10,000 a year and would wind up with $2,702,815.10 once you reach retirement. That equates to about $830,000 today, meaning that your retirement income in today's dollars would be a little over $66,000 a year. Now, of course, I can hear some of you practically screaming at your phones or your computer monitors right now, saying that you can always change your initial decision later on down the line. And you're right. Say if you went your first year saving 10% of your income, and then realized that you could still manage to get by comfortably during your working life saving 20% of your income. You certainly could do that in the second year of work, or whenever you happen to realize it, but I'm going to just say it's the second year of work for this example. And let's say if you did that, you upped your savings rate to 20% in the second year of work. Meaning instead of $5,000 invested in the second year, you're investing about $10,000. Given the numbers in that last example, you would wind up with $2,597,881.85 when you retire. That's right around $105,000 less than you had if you started at 20%, but it's still significantly better than staying at 10% for the whole time. In the end, the difference between staying at 20% for your whole working career and switching to 20% in the second year of your working career after doing 10% in your first year translates to about $32,000 in today's dollars and roughly $215 a month in retirement income. Again, in today's dollars. So it isn't necessarily backbreaking if you do happen to catch it early, but that initial decision is still very important and it can make a huge difference when dealing with this budget. So the way I see it, there are two main ways that this budget could fail. The first is if you aren't already aware of where your money is going and how much of it is actually leaving the house each month, because you may end up not having enough money to cover your expenses, or you may end up forgetting some expenses that you don't pay every single month, such as say, car tabs, and other irregular expenses like that, but that do come up every now and then. This also means that the term no budget budget is a little misleading, I'll admit, because you do have to set up a budget initially, just like any other budgeting method. It's just that you don't have to do a new one every single month, assuming that you set up your initial budget properly. The second way that this could fail is by not leaving you enough money to live on when you reach retirement, which I already covered. So in summation, that's how the automatic budget works. As always, if there are any other types of budgets that you want me to cover, just let me know in the comments section below. But that'll do it for me today. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell next to my name so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. I generally upload every single Friday, and if you have a friend that would be interested in this kind of content, be sure to share it with them. Let's really get this information out there and start our own financial revolution.